pianist. She's uh, impersonating Nina today. Thank you, thank you. <sighs> Welcome home to Unity. It's nice to see your faces and new faces in the crowd. New and old medium. So, and I'm glad to be here also. Our unity statement, uh, we hear this often, every Sunday actually, so it goes like this. Unity is a positive path for spiritual living. We gather to create an experience of spirit. At Unity CR, we offer practical teachings that empower abundant and meaningful living. Meeting you right where you are, we endeavor to provide a variety of ways to support your path of spiritual living. Yahoo. Yeah. Yahoo. <laughs> so August is a very busy month. Um, our prayer person today is Joshua. So he'll be in the room that says prayer room after the service if you have joys or concerns you would like to pray with, with Joshua. Uh, there is no brunch today, but we have cookies and coffee, and we would love to have people sign up for August. So if you have an inkling to cook, sign up. August 6th, next Saturday. I don't know where half the year has gone, uh, but here we are going to be in August. August 6th is our talent show. And we have talent beyond measure in this in our community. So please come and enjoy this wonderful event. I believe it starts at 7 p.m. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. So, correction, uh, bring your things at 5.30, uh, and uh, goodies start at 6.30, and move on from there. Um, in your spirit activity sheet, you have a World Day of Prayer as in August. That really is in September, and so watch for information about that. It will be held here in uh, Unity CR. August 12th is a setup for our garage sale, and this will be a plethora of items to buy, and this is going to go towards our new outdoor electronic LED sign. So come and participate and spend your money. We also need volunteers, and there is a schedule on the webpage, so if you are inclined, please visit that site. And the garage sale is on August 13th. And Susan Liddell is starting a five principles class. It will be four Sundays in August starting the 14th. Or maybe three Saturdays, 14th, 21st, and 28th. So there are many things. Look at your little insert, and that will tell you everything that you need to know for the upcoming month of sep August, September. Whoa, getting ahead of myself. Ah, so... I invite you to repeat the invocation with me, and it starts, there is. There is only one presence and one power in my life and in the universe, God, the good, omnipotent. And I invite you into this pause of prayerfulness. And as we have a, we know that unity was founded on prayer. And as we are in this community, I invite you, if willing, to hold the hand of your neighbor as we are in this time of prayer, joining hearts, knowing the powerful consciousness of prayer. 
that it changes not only our own lives, but the life of this center, the lives in this community, and the world. So we pause in this heart connection, sending peace to every soul on this planet. We move into that realm of the heartfelt connection that we send that love out into the world. And as we focus on these truths, we know that our wholeness, our well-being, we spread that truth throughout our community and again into the world. And for those that are on our hearts needing prayer, we silently say their name. And in this time of communion, connection, and celebration, we raise these prayers on the wings of love. And so it is. Amen and amen. We've had a whole month of healing. And actually, we've had every day as a healing experience, but we've had Reverend Brenda speaking to us about that, and our daily word today is healing. The energizing life of God flows through me. When I feel healthy, I may take my health for granted. However, when I experience discomfort, my mind can become preoccupied with physical aches and worries. Knowing the power of the mind creates reality. I train my thoughts to reclaim my wholeness now. I release thoughts of pain or sickness and affirm, I am made in the image and likeness of God. I am healthy and vibrant, whole and well. I am a channel for the infinite expression of divine life. The energizing life of God flows through me now, revitalizing, restoring, and renewing. My mind rests on the truth of health, and my body follows its lead. From Isaiah 58, 8, Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And we have music we get to sing today. We let it be, and it is on your insert. And if stand as you are able, and we will join our voices together. Oh, <laughs> 
is Sarah here today with youth? Uh, oh, Linda, is now Sarah today? <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Today is the fifth Sunday. Now, normally that means we play games, and we might do that, but we also have a little service project in the community room to prepare for next week and, or for the, this Saturday. And um, so we're going to sort of corral the community room and take it over, and we're going to play games, and we're going to do our little service project. And we'll, you'll be able to see that later. Oh, we are playing in the light. We are playing in the light, in the light, in the light. We are playing in the light, in the light of God. In the light, 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 in the light of God. And now we are, and now we are at our special music venue. Janet is not playing the cello. <laughs> I was going to say now playing the cello. Yes, thank you, Janet. It was suggested to me to play this piece because of the front part of your program for the month. musician today. Thank you, Janet. 
and a fabulous standing musician today. Let's just call it fabulous all the way around. Thank you for being here. How are y'all? I was thinking this morning about this summer. Every summer I promise myself that I will play. And uh, I've actually scheduled some time in August to do that. But I was thinking this morning about what an amazing summer it's been. We had a few of those, you know, hot dog days of summer, but it's really been a fabulous summer. Are you all doing your fair share of playing? Not so much. Few people are. For the ones that are doing their fair share, good for you. Invite the ones who are sort of going, hmm, invite them into your fun. I, I used to have a friend that, did that and then she moved <laughs> she's like you wouldn't have any fun if i didn't call you every once in a while and tell you to quit working oh so anyway today's message isn't about fun <laughs> i just sort of remembered why we're here um not just a chit chat but we have important important juicy stuff to go over we are on our final installment of our July series on healing. And I have to say, it has been so gratifying, the conversations that I've had with several of you, uh, the comments, the questions, the feedback. It is always exciting for me to accidentally discover a topic that really speaks to people and that really gets the juices flowing. And I'm guessing there probably isn't anyone in the room who wouldn't be open to a little bigger dose of wholeness and well-being and healing. So we're going to review our sound bites, which are also our mantras and our affirmations that we've covered over the last four weeks. Our basis, our very foundation, is in the first creation story, first chapter of Genesis. It is written, and God said, let us make humankind in our image and in our likeness. Let us make humankind in our image and our likeness. Did you read that in today's daily word? I am made in the image and likeness of spirit, of God, of life, of wholeness, of perfection. So we know by now that dis-ease, illness, does not live in our spiritual being. It does not live in the divine perfection out of which we are born. Illness or dis-ease is merely a thought in the collective consciousness. As far as I can tell, since the whole history of humankind, it's been a thought in our minds that illness and disease are possibilities, and those thoughts outpicture in our bodies. Myrtle Fillmore, Unity's co founder, heard these words. She had been a very ill person as a young child and clear into her adult years, and she heard these words from a metaphysician. I am a child of God, therefore I do not inherit sickness. When she heard those words, she knew she was instantly healed and used a process of prayer and meditation for that healing to outpicture in her body. Charles Fillmore, the other Unity co-founder, I love this quote, the mind of peace precedes bodily healing. The mind of peace precedes bodily healing. And he also wrote in the revealing word, all healing is based on mental cleansing. I just had a visual image of my kitchen sponge covered with soft scrub with bleach and, you know, getting inside my skull and doing a mental cleansing. Nothing works like soft scrub with bleach. All healing is based on mental cleansing. And when the mind is free from error thoughts, harmony ensues in the body. 
their son, Lowell Fillmore, in his book, um, The Prayer Way to Health, Wealth, and Happiness. It's a delicious book. He said, without conscious thought, Without conscious thought, our bodies are self-renewing. That's because we are created out of the divine order of God mind. Let us make them in our image and our likeness. Perpetual life, eternal life. And Lowell said, it is up to us to cooperate with God's plan by allowing this divine blueprint of us to have its way in us, have its way in us. So our spiritual work is about transferring our faith, transferring our thoughts and beliefs from the energy of illness and dis-ease and transferring those thoughts and faith to the divine perfection of us, the absolute truth of us, the wholeness and well-being out of which we are created. Um, we also read a little bit last week from Unity Reverend Ernest Wilson. He wrote several books, and this is a tiny little one called The Great Physician. And he addressed a question in that book. He said, how long will my healing take? Does anyone know that answer for themselves? How long will my healing take? What would you say, Jim? Ah. It'll take as long as it takes, right? When the time is right. Well, ooh, now that's a whole nother question. When the time is right for who, what, when, where, all of the above. So the question was, how long will it take for me to be healed? Healing is instantaneous in spirit. Myrtle Fillmore knew that the moment she heard those words. Healing is instantaneous in spirit, and it progresses from the consciousness and expresses from our bodies. We looked into Joel Goldsmith a little bit last week. We left ourselves with um, kind of a paradoxical question there. Uh, this little book is called The Master Speaks, and Joel Goldsmith was the founder of a, a New Thought faith called the infinite way and he talked we talked last week about his idea that disease is nothing more than a shadow and we talked about how you know particularly as children i love watching them first seeing their shadow and getting fascinated by shadows, and I've been scared by my own shadow a time or two <laughs> in the middle of the night, wandering around the house like I like to do. So disease has no more substance than a shadow. It is not power. It is not presence or reality. Reality, capital R, in the absolute realm. And he says, Mr. Goldsmith, the degree to which we can look at that shadow and not be disturbed by it, not have to say there is no such thing, it does not exist in reality, that degree constitutes our degree of the unfolded Christ consciousness. Remember he, the, our closing thought from him was this whole thing about it's not God and disease. It's not God and thought or belief. It's only God. And he says we must realize the allness of God and consider nothing else. Now, for us in the human condition, that can sound a little paradoxical. It's like we talked in the very first week. 
in God mind, in perfect being, in spirit being, there is no dis-ease, there is no illness. Yet it exists in our human condition. Most of us have dealt with, some of us are dealing with illness or disease in this very moment. So one thing that I learned in my um, healing process several years ago, after living with chronic pain for years, what I ultimately realized was that I needed to stop resisting it. I remember clearly my mantra in the first year and a half was, I want my life back, I want my body back, I want my energy back, I want my strength back. Complete resistance to the what is. And once I realized that I needed to stop fighting against it, that I needed to cease wishing that it were so, then my body began to heal. It was a very odd paradox of inviting in the dis-ease, inviting in the chronic pain, and finding out what it had for me. So, <clears throat> no resistance. Goldsmith writes about that. He's referring to the scripture that says, Agree with thine adversary and resist not evil. They're used in the same sense in which we would say when confronted with error, error being error thought, disease, illness, shadow, <clears throat> pardon me, whatever name we give it. Goldsmith says, do not set up a mental wall against it. The words, the word wall just jumped out at me. Do not set up a wall against it. Do not set up a mental rebellion against it. Do not set up a mental denial against it. But learn to wait in silence. Have it in for a cup of tea, as my friend Martha would say. In our healing work, what happens is we develop an ability to look the shadow right in the eye. We invite in our thoughts about disease, about illness, and we say, yes, I will be with you. I will take care of you. And what, what is it you would have me know? Many of us I know um, are in the school of thought that life in life is in and of itself a school. That we are here to learn from life and to learn what life has for us. And in our human condition, these um, illnesses and diseases are a part of our life condition. And do we recognize, Goldsmith writes a lot about, it's how we react, what I would say respond, it's how we respond to the conditions of the disease that holds the power. <clears throat> In the unity practice of denials and affirmations, Charles Fillmore would have said, this condition has no power in my mind, body, spirit. There is one presence, one power. Now Goldsmith takes it a step further and says, don't even give it the energy of denial. So two slightly different schools of thought and we get to choose what we line up with and which path works better for us. When we turn our faith and our consciousness and our eyes and our thoughts to God, to the divine blueprint within, 
We are activating the intelligence of God in our being. We are activating life, precious life in every cell in our being because the divine intelligence, that's what Myrtle Fillmore did. She spoke to every cell, every organ, every part of her physical body. Spoke to the divine intelligence, God mind in her physical being. And that divine intelligence is a far greater power than any diseased cell. Whatever name we want to give that diseased cell. I remember a message I heard from um, Reverend Greg Nettler back in probably 2003 um, at the original Unity on 9th and Tracy in Kansas City. He's the minister there. And he was actually reading a Charles Fillmore talk. And 13, 14 years later, I remember him saying Fillmore's words, there is no dis-ease beyond God's ability to heal. There is no disease beyond God's ability to heal. So to look at our disease, to look at our illness, and to say, I see you, I know you, is to tap into our spiritual consciousness. And another thought from Goldsmith, he says, when we come to this place in thought where we do not start denying the shadow, but where we know the unreality, meaning that it doesn't exist in the absolute realm, it's not real, capital R, and we know the unreality of all forms of sin, error, thought, disease, and death. And we know that they in and of themselves have no power and can do nothing to anybody except in the degree of our response to them. So when we understand that relationship, Goldsmith says, we have come to the Christ. We have come to the Christ consciousness in us. And he outlines three steps in spiritual healing. Actually, he outlined four. But if I were writing the book, I would have outlined three. So that's what you're going to hear. I'm a better editor than writer. Um, so the first step is attain conscious awareness of God presence within. Touch it. Feel it, know it. For some of us, it might be in the form of words. For some of us, it might be a feeling in our core. For some of us, it might be a knowing. It comes, the awareness, the recognition comes in so many different ways. I always say that spirit speaks to us in the way in which we best hear in the way in which we are most receptive. Step one, attain conscious awareness of God presence. And a final thought from Goldsmith on that step. He says, through grace, through gratitude, through acknowledgement of God as source, the presence and power, through conscious recognition of God as divine law and being unto our experience, we take the first step to the attainment of the consciousness of oneness at one meant. Step two, meditate. I love his words. Meditate, cogitate. Such a great word, cogitate. Another synonym for cogitate is ponder. So meditate, ponder, cogitate, reflect. He says, go into quiet introspection. So we connect, we tap in, we plug into the divine, the divine presence that is activated as us. And when we're in that zone, when we're in that space, when we're in that connection and in that knowing, we reflect, we ponder, we let divine mind have some space in us. 
And the step number three is that we suspend our belief that there is something to overcome here. Suspend our belief that there's something to fight against, something to push against, something we want out of our lives. I gave it my best shot. I gave it a good year and a half, two years. And the chronic pain um, did not improve in that time. So I tried it. Only took me a couple of years, but so I tried a different path. As long as we focus, as long as we give our energy, our words, our thoughts to disease or error thoughts, as long as we believe that there's a disease to overcome, Goldsmith says we can't tap into Christ's mind. It's like we're looking this direction or we're looking this direction. It's a conscious action and a conscious choice. And when we connect with the one presence and the one power, it is activated and it rushes through us, mind, body, spirit, changing us, correcting us, aligning us, and returning us to wholeness. It's all getting in alignment with our spiritual being, with the first creation of us. Let us make them in our image and likeness. That's our spiritual being in creation. So as we head home on our topic, I lastly want to impress on us the power of forgiveness as it correlates to wholeness. Remember, um, Myrtle talked about forgiveness. Um, Charles certainly wrote about it. I can't remember if I shared it in the series or not. And in my healing process, I discovered that forgiveness was my final missing key. And it actually occurred in a workshop um, here at Unity Sunday afternoon. Anybody remember it was when uh, Reverend Anne Marie and Jeff Davis were here and um, their minister friends, Rich, and her friend's name was also Anne Marie. I think their last name was Groth, like G R O T H. They wrote a book called Proclamations of the Soul. And they did a Sunday afternoon workshop here. They spoke Sunday morning. I wasn't going to attend, I was, had a lot to do, I was busy, and I heard their message and I thought, well, I'll stay for that. So he's randomly going through this book and we're working these different proclamations and he got to forgiveness and it must have been like Myrtle hearing, I am a child of God, therefore I do not inherit disease because I heard this proclamation on forgiveness and something lit up in me and in that instant I knew that that was my key to returning to wholeness and I didn't know what it was going to look like I didn't know what the process was I didn't know the how-to and of course I need to know any of that all that I knew that I knew that I knew was that forgiveness was my last missing key and that's at the um, tail end of a, a very long spiritual path to wholeness. So in her little book, Putting Life Back Together, Marion Brown wrote, often the only thing that stands between us and our healing is unforgiveness. God's healing love cannot fill a mind and heart that is full of resentment, bitterness, and remorse. Remember that Fillmore quote, healing is about mental cleansing? So in order to live in wholeness, I think a lot of times we need to empty our minds and hearts of, of hatred, of judgment, of resentment. Um, in a book, The Rainbow Connection, Rebecca Clark wrote, it is through forgiveness that true healing can occur on all levels. Forgiveness removes the errors of the mind and brings about harmony. 
And um, you all know the great Catherine Ponder, the original prosperity queen and new thought. She uh, wrote years ago that if we all did a daily forgiveness process, we would put 90% of the physicians out of business and we'd all be living in wholeness and prosperity. And finally, Sue Sicking in her book, Beyond a Miracle, she said the greatest prescription for a healthy body and a full life is to forgive and forget, to cleanse our own mind so that the divine plan of God may be set free in us to carry on its perfect work. Forgiveness is, I think, one of our toughest spiritual works that we can accomplish. Is there, is there anyone who feels like they have forgiven absolutely everyone and everything in their life? Would you just levitate on up here and t tell your story? <laughs> um, how many of you are familiar with good old Annie Lamott, a very modern day writer, um, quite irreverent, which is why I think I love her so much. She tells it like it is. And she says that lack of forgiveness is like a leprosy of the insides. Left untreated, she says, it can take out tissue, equilibrium, soul, and sense of self. We mostly forgive life, she said, for being so unfair, for saddling us with so much, and for being so excruciating. We even live, excuse me, we even learn to forgive ourselves just a little bit for being so ridiculous for being such a basket case, and for thinking we are losers. Now, forgiveness doesn't begin with reason, does it? Our logical reasoning mind needs to be right. Anybody grow up in that family system? Hell to pay if you weren't right about what you were doing or saying or how you were behaving. So the, the logical reasoning mind needs to defend and out of our own righteous, prideful self, we need to attack others for being in the wrong. Which means when we live there, either very, very subtly or just right out loud, when we live there, we have no peace. We have no peace. And Lamott quotes Rumi, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I will meet you there. And she says if we can make a break for that field, we might just forget all the whys, all the nuance, and all the details of our stories which we're sure we've gotten right, the ones that do us. So as we head into meditation this morning, let us remember <clears throat> it is the mind of peace that precedes healing and wholeness. Is anybody in the room in a hurry for a mind of peace. Is anybody in the room in a hurry for wholeness and well being? Out beyond the ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. Let us meet there. I invite you to relax in your seats. Over the last many weeks, we have taken in so many 
wonderful and outstanding thoughts and concepts and ideas about wholeness, about healing, about forgiveness. And it's delicious to know that right here, right now, in this now moment, our minds don't have to figure out anything. We come to our heart space and we invite the spirit of activity the spirit of life, the divine intelligence, mind, spirit, and body. To have its way in us. As Isaiah wrote long, long, long ago, O oh God, create in me a pure heart. We allow spirit to jump, gently sweep over our soul. Gently releasing or moving any defense, resistance. We invite our shadow, come sit, I will be with you. I will care for you. I'm curious, genuinely curious. What will you have me know? We don't have to move, we don't have to think, we don't have to do anything. We open up our whole self to the activity of spirit in us. Have your way. Have your way in me. Here I am. Here I am.
And so it is. And so we fully trust and let it be. Amen. That was a lovely meditation.